I was in a very dark place last year. And because I manifested, because I said I was going to change my life when I, I said I was going to change my life and I didn't even believe myself because I continued to repeat that I changed completely my life. Focus on love. Love well, wasn't focus. Aim for above because the ceiling's focus. Focus on love. Love wasn't focus. Aim for above because the ceiling is bogus. Focus on love. Boo! Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Famous Rapper Convos, only on Famous Rapper Network. Um, I'm here. I'm David Prorock, the host, with a very special guest today, Kid Rohan. Um, Kid Rohan, I've been following for, I don't know, maybe even like two years at this point. How it's do we while. meet? How do we meet? Um, I just know you from Instagram and I know that you live close to me, but I don't know if I met you because you live close to me or if that was just No, I think it was like one of those group chats. It was one of those like promotion group chats. I think that's how um, we met. Was it through the modern musician community? My, might be, might be. I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, but we've been following each other. I considered like scrolling up to the top of our DMs to see, but that seemed like a waste of time. I think the, the first thing, yeah, the first time was I just found your song virtual. And I was like, this is Oh, crazy. really? I DM'd you. Yeah. Oh, nice. After my EP dropped. So that was uh, yeah. in 2018. Nice. So you have like about three minutes. I want you to think back to like when you first got started with music. Um, how did you first get introduced to music? Uh, where have you been since then? Um, and what have you done uh, to get to where you are now? So I started music back in like middle school when I started doing poetry and people said I was really, really good at poetry. And people told me since rap is like a very trendy form of poetry, people were like, yo, you should do rap. And, I, and at the time I was kind of like boomer mindset. So I was like, rap is bad and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I was not I was a little bit skeptical about it. So, but I started doing like little parody raps in class to kind of uh, make people laugh and stuff like that. Impersonating people, kind of like epic rap battles of history kind of stuff. And then people are like, yo, you're actually good at this. You should start taking it seriously. So in high school, I started taking it seriously. And 10th grade, I started releasing stuff. And it wasn't like really good. I didn't, I didn't even know what mixing or mastering was. I just released stuff on SoundCloud mm -hmm. remixes. And over time, I just kept on developing, figuring out that my music was trash, remaking, figuring out that my music was trash, and just continuing that cycle of just trying mm -hmm. to get better. Cool. Uh, how old are you now? I'm 17 years old, almost 18 in December. I'll okay. Be so you uh, in 11th Actually, grade, in, 12th grade? In a few days, I'll be 18 when, from when this episode airs. Oh, sweet. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. um, cool. So that's great. Uh, I feel like you kind of, I mean, you dropped uh, an EP. What else? Yeah. Tell me more details about, about your story. So, yeah. So more related to that, that was how I got into music, but how I formed an emotional connection with music, I think it's just because through my like darkest times in high school, I always listened to music. I always come back to it, whether it be listening to it or creating it. And I'm like, oh, this is for real something I want to do. This is something that I wake up every single day thinking about and practicing every single day without forcing myself to just naturally practicing. So with this, after like realizing how much it could help me through my darkest times, I realized, you know what, I, I'm really blessed with this skill. I have to use it as much as possible and have one life on this earth whoever's watching this moment is something that you can never get back this is something crazy right i'm interacting with david we're talking this is something this is a point in time so me realizing that these are points in time and i have to live these points in time the way i want to and embrace these moments cool. that's awesome if you were to think 12 months from now um where do you hope to be with your music at that time and then like maybe touch on like one to three milestones that you hope to achieve uh, from now for the next 12 months? So for the next 12 months, I really plan to, I'm releasing an album in the next 12 months that is like nothing ever I've ever done before. But if I'm being honest, it's like, I don't think anything I've ever seen done before in rap, period. Um, wow. So it's a very interesting album. I can't give too much away because it's very secretive, but I'm releasing this album and I plan in 12 months, which is 12 months from December 19th, 
I plan to have actually three projects released of the year uh, 12 months from that month in 2021, which is one is the mysterious album I'm talking about. That's very, very interesting. I think that one's going to be my biggest project so far. I'm also going to release a mixtape. Uh, like I mi- released a mixtape called Kid Rohan 2. I plan to release a mixtape called Kid Rohan 3. That might not work out though. If I blow up during this year, then I might have to scrap all these ideas and like start with singles to kind of uh, attract a different audience. But like, if I don't, then this is probably what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to keep on grinding, building my base. I want to be very way more active on YouTube. I've started kind of being more active on YouTube, uploading like things that are not just music and stuff like that and editing like these cool little skits and stuff. I want to be more active there because I feel like there's a huge demographic there. And I genuinely like watching YouTubers. I have been ever since I was young watching YouTubers. So like being able to watch that just is awesome to me. And like, there's so many ideas I want to like do. Like I I have music, I have this like, I I have the YouTube thing. I have a podcast that I started for for a period of time just to experiment that. And I feel like I'm going to come back to all of these one way or another and and just create something with that. So I really want to be a multimedia artist, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it sounds like you're focusing mostly on creating content um, over the next 12 months. And uh, it sounds like you're not stressing too much about like building an audience. You care at this point more about like recording songs, making these projects. I I, I want to build an audience, but I feel like creating content is the best way to build the audience. You know what I mean? Cause I want to create content that inter that makes the audience not just see me as an artist, but see me as something that they regularly come to see me as like a KSI or like a big YouTuber, like, like, like not see me as that in, in terms of like popularity, but see me as that, as if they see a new song in their inbox, or if they see a new video in their subscription feed, that they're as excited as something else. Like I want to give people that excitement when they see a video of mine because of the quality put into it. And same with songs that I put out. So I want to, I want to create that feeling for my audience. So I want to focus. It's not necessarily, I I want to build a huge audience, but I think recently I've shifted towards instead of building a huge audience. Okay. I understand that I can't have a million followers like right now. Right. I can't have, I can't reach all these milestones right now. Instead of really like trying, I want to focus on what I have right now. Take advantage of the people, not take advantage of the people I have, but like recognize and acknowledge the people I have and say, you know what, because you've stuck with me, even though I don't have a number, you're a person that stuck with me and I really appreciate that. How do I make the best content for you possible? And I think if I do that, then the people who really want to watch my content will come along. Obviously I do have to market stuff, but I think I need to focus on the people who actually love my content, love my music and give them the, the content they deserve. If that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. hundred percent. So you, um, do you already have this following? Would you say the uh, small um, group of people that uh, you're going to be using to um, you're more or less like describing like market research kind of, but like using this a uh, small audience to like test different yeah. things, see what people like the most. Yeah. 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 I think, I think I have a small, I do have a small audience, but I do, I think I do have there a few, quite a few devoted fans who um, that I would talk about. Like ever since I started editing, editing the do something music video, which is something I released that video, yeah. I literally said, you know, everyone, even you were in it, everyone who wants to be <laughs> in this video is going to be in this video. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. I, and I brought the that community awesome. that the small community that I do have together into one project there. So I want to do more stuff like that. Cause like, I don't have a big community, but whoever was in that video is super happy. They were in that video. Right. Cause yeah. they were involved I in was. this cool thing. So, yeah. yeah. So like, that I left feeling. a comment. I said, that's the cool, this is the coolest video I've ever been in. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that, man. So like, yeah. I want to in- interact with the audience more and build a cool. really loyal fan base. Nice. Um, so if you were to think, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if you were to think about like your next 12 months, uh, based on what you know now, um, and assume you had like a magic wand that could yeah. introduce you to anybody in the world. Um, what type of person, like be it a photographer or a, um, I don't know, a record label exec or like, yeah. who do you think would be able to help you the most? Like one person? Yeah. Ooh, that's a hard like if one. You, if you could meet anybody um, and it doesn't have to be a specific person, it could be, but like, you know, if someone okay. is watching this and then they fit the description and they can reach out to you. So who are you looking for? Hmm. That's hard. I think, hmm, 
I think in general, what I've really need, what would really help me is like someone else who's just someone else who can edit maybe like really well that that's general I'll also give you a specific answer but like in general someone who could edit would really propel my career into terms of creating the content that I want but in terms of like really creating a brand for myself and blowing up I don't see anyone else really doing it um like Cole Bennett is right now Cole Bennett is Mm -hmm. a, a, a um director that really captures ideas into reality and not only that builds a brand with each artist he works with so I feel like that would do the best for my career than any feature or anything other thing like that. I was, mm-hmm. I'm also working with videographers, so I don't want to discredit them. Like um, Ethan Fonrath shot the obvious music video. He's really good too. And I'm, I'm definitely going to work with him first. Like he's someone I really value. And, and before I choose someone that I've never met, I would choose him, but Cole Bennett would be awesome. Cool. Yeah. Or I mean, somebody like Cole Bennett, that's trying yeah. to do something similar. Um, yeah. that you could connect with and get on board. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's great. That's definitely something that I that's would a great need question, to do more yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> is like make music videos. I have like no music videos. Um, yeah. but I know as I can always just like artist, make them later, yeah. but it's like so hard. It's so much work. Yeah. As an independent artist, like it's such a, uh, good idea. Quick tip for anyone doing music videos. This is what I personally think. Do not get shoot too much footage. Do not shoot the give yourself restrictions because if you shoot too much footage like i did for that music video it will take you forever to choose one of the best clips and stuff so give yourself mm. limits yeah so, uh, how do you do that you just say you know what i'm only gonna take this a shot of this like twice max i'm not gonna mm-hmm. take more than two shots of the same thing and then oh I'm just, yeah. I, and then i'm gonna plan out the music video so i don't have a bunch of footage of a bunch of parts of the music video Yeah, I feel like you have to, um, and something that a videographer or director does is like plan out what they're going to shoot first and then shoot those things individually. And then you can make a good music video without doing that, but like like a simple one, but it's just going to take you more time because you're like, should I put this clip here or this clip here? Like you'll, you'll, you'll be like, what's the best combo? And it's like, you'll coming up with that combo will be hard. Uh huh. And it's a lot to, a lot to watch. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so Kid Rohan, could you tell me, um, how did you first learn how to freestyle rap? Ooh, that's a good one. I just started and I wasn't that great, I think. And I just like, let me just find this rhyme. Let me find this other rhyme. Let me find this other rhyme. And I like practice every day, not because like I was trying to be something, but I just like wanted to do it. Like I naturally was inclined to do it. So I'm like, I come up with like patterns and rhymes. Like you notice when you, I freestyle, I say a lot of the same things which I'm trying to work on, but like, I'd come up with these patterns, like, um, acrobat back to back, um, had to rap. Like I'll do these kind of things where sometimes it'll be like words that line up where like, I've already freestyled them so much that like, if I do this word, I might just do that. And I just keep on trying that. And then you just get better by trying and failing. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm being honest. Cool. So it sounds like, um, you kind of, uh, piece together flows by finding words and phrases that rhyme that mm-hmm. you like, and then, um, using them in different ways, reusing them, and yeah. First, I like think of more the flow. phrases. Yeah, first I think of the flow, then I think of the lyrics, then I think of the bars. And like the bars are actually the ones that like have wordplay and double entendres and stuff like that. Was there any um, like tip or piece of advice that helped you a lot in terms of developing as a freestyle rapper? Think of your like voice as like think of the flow first. I think, like try to get the flow for, first. What and, do you mean and by when that? You listen, like just just go like whenever the beat's going i am on this level right now back in this game and i'm making a sound like you can make some random like lyrics with that but you need the flow first you need like how are you going to approach the beat because sometimes people just go off beat because they they try to shove lyrics in and then they go and then they go uh and it just sounds like they're like struggling to fit the next word but just think of it like when finding the flow, do you think it's necessary to move your body? Ooh, I really like doing that. I'm, I'm always like, ever since like, I used to be in jazz band, I'd always be like this all mm-hmm. the time. Like, I just love moving to music. I love music yeah. that way. So for me, it helps. I don't think you need it, but like me nodding my head, I do that all the time. When I listen to music all the time, people think I'm weird for that because I just do it so much. So yeah. 
cool. Yeah. I think it's definitely helpful to move your body. Then you can feel like it's easier to find the flow if you have your yeah. body um, involved. Sweet. All right. Next question. Kid Rohan, what do you think is the secret to becoming a famous rapper? I think you have to be very consistent. You have to master. You, you have to be focused on mastering and getting better. Like always like mastering your skills, be consistent and be patient and hardworking. I can probably summarize that more, but be, so working be hard, consistent, be, be consistent, working hard, uh, try, always try to get better and improve. Don't be like satisfied with where you are and patience. I think patience. that's what it takes. But like in terms yeah. of blowing up, just, just having, just kind of being unique and confident in your style. That's, that's what I'd say. Okay. Be unique, confident work yeah. hard and develop your skills and be patient. Mm -hmm. Cool. And like um, open-minded too. Yeah. What would you say is the most unique thing about you or I your think, music? I think, I think I've, I have a lot of unique stuff. I haven't, I'm very, very, I think versatile. I think I'm very versatile. Like I can produce, I can rap, I can do all these things. I can also, I'm really, my marketing style, I think, is extremely unique. Like I, I can, I can take anything and and make it correlate to something and market into something. Like I have a little like mini show that I started just to promote my new single, right? Mm -hmm. So like I do a lot of these like really cool things that are like multimedia, not just music, to promote mm -hmm. myself. I think that's one thing that's very unique. Second, I have a lot of production. I have a lot of songs that I had that are not public, so I can't really speak for them now. That showcase like a sonic change not just like lyrics but like sonically musically it's 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 um it's very developed and i think i do a lot of slowed stuff or i'm working on a lot of slow stuff so i think i'll bring that to light but my versatility in general my versatility with music and my versatility with multimedia is i think what makes me unique cool what is um, the song that has the message that you're like most proud of or you want the most people to hear? That is a really, really, really good question. I have, I, it's, it's tough between two. And there's two, I've thought about this question a lot. Two songs that I have that are really, I'm going to rank them number two, number one, if that's okay. So okay. number two is called ILM. ILM was a song I made in on Valentine's Day. I marketed it as a love song to somebody, but it's actually just I love myself. That's the whole theme of it. So basically that song was, I made that during a dark place. I was going through a lot and I made that to kind of be like, you know what, loving yourself is enough. And although that song didn't do like as good, I wasn't even concerned about the song doing good. That song mentally propelled me to create the things that I created later on. So mm -hmm. that song in a way changed my life because it changed my perspective. But I think the song that definitely changed my life more than any other song is do something. That song has completely changed my life. First of all, it's my most popular song, but that's not even the reason it changed my life. Um, I basically well, how that song was created was I was in a really dark place in this say around the same time I made ILM, right? And you know how like perfection can hold you back. Like you you want things to be perfect. So I was going through a lot of that. Like a lot of things weren't working out. I wanted this and that to be perfect. I met up with my friend, like, you know what? Screw all that. Let's just create something from scratch. Let's just ha have a set a day aside where we're completely open-minded. We just have fun and do whatever we want to. I, I made chocolate hash browns. I did all this random stuff. Like I know I, I just <laughs> with a complete open mind and my uh -huh. friend who has never rapped before, like I literally said, yo, you want to, you want to make a song? I was like, sure. And we made that song pretty much front to back, back in, on, on that day. And wow. someone who has never rapped before and, and all of that, it just shows the idea that sometimes you just have to do something to get out of the rut that you're in. Mm -hmm. So that message is so passionate to me because that can save lives that can change lives that can change vision. Because something you're, 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 you might be worried about what other people's people think. You might be worried about this is not perfect. All these things hold you back from actually connecting with people, right? Mm. The secret is to just do something to get out of that sometimes. And I think that message is super, super, super important. Wow. Interesting. You made chocolate hash browns and then that inspired yeah. the song to do something. Not necessarily. There's just a lot of stuff we did that day. Yeah. And that was one of the things. We also played like Mario Kart, I think. <laughs> That's fun. That's a good thing. Um, cool. So Kid Rohan, is there anything that we haven't talked about yet that you want to talk about? I want everyone, 
I mean, honestly, I got stuff coming out. I could talk about that, but I don't want to talk about that right now because I want to talk about the fact that take advantage of your life, take advantage of these the opportunities presented. But I think most importantly, don't forget to love yourself and don't forget the importance of manifestation and, and manifesting things, things into place. If I were to take one thing, this is beyond me, beyond my music. I just want whoever's watching to know that. I want whoever's watching to know that I was in a very dark place last year. And because I manifested, because I said I was going to change my life, when I, I said I was going to change my life and I didn't even believe myself, because I continued to repeat that, I changed completely my life. So nice. nothing, is, nothing is certain, which is a blessing and a curse. So mm -hmm. take, it, take advantage and keep pushing and do something. Cool. That's beautiful. Do you use um, music as a manifestation tool? Planning to, planning to. That's that's the other album I plan to release next year, but maybe not release next year, which is all about that, all about manifestation, all about drive, and it's going to be manifestation combined with music. So I do use music a lot, but if you make a, you know how uh, music hooks can be repetitive, right? Mm -hmm. If you make a repetitive hook about something positive happening in your life, that's manifestation. So that boundary is going to be crossed so much, and I think in my music. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, do you have any questions for me? Man, what, what inspired you to create this series? Because I know you started, you did a lot of like different media stuff before this, mm -hmm. trying to like plant, like figure out what you're doing. You did Discord um, things, you did like different like counseling things um, to help out rappers. What made you want to do this interviewing thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I really like, like how did connecting... Ruka, Ruka, before, how did yeah. you switch from like making music to do that, doing that? Mm. Um. I don't know. I just decided. Well, so I was trying to build um, a, a community of music artists um, mm -hmm. that can come together and help each other grow and collaborate on music um, and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to bring I started by bringing groups of music artists together for like online events over Zoom. Um, but mm -hmm. then I quickly mm -hmm. found that like getting multiple people to show up at the same time is like really challenging. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, I, it's just way easier to meet people with people one-on-one -on -one. and people often like, like that better because then they get like the personal attention, um, that they mm -hmm. deserve. And, um, so that's why I went with interviews, uh, switching from, I mean, I still make music and I just do this as like another part. Um, I also do something called freestyle roulette live on discord, like you mentioned. Um, and the I idea think I was that, in one. yeah. Oh, you, you've been there. No, did remember that time that we did a freestyle. It was you and me and a bunch of people. Kyle James oh. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did do that. Yeah, that was dope. Um, yeah, so I still do that. And I do like these these different things. Um, and I basically just keep iterating based on um, the feedback that I get from people. Uh, and also like what I learned from running the events. Um, and also something for me is like, it. Ne I need to get it to a place where um, there's like a machine built around it, where what I have to do is like fairly simple. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, so that I can do it more. Um, and so like getting multiple people to show up at the same time, like that was taking up like way too much time. Well, whereas mm -hmm. like doing interviews like this is much easier because I can just communicate with people one-on-one -on -one and then it's like, when do you want to show up? And then they put time on my calendar and then I meet them. So doing it one-on-one -on -one is just like easier. Uh, yeah. and, yeah. um, and the reason I do it is because I want to, you know, showcase the music artists, um, that that I know um, because I think it's a good thing to do. And um, I like your music a lot and I want more people to listen to it. So yeah, thank you, you come on in. Yeah. I'm waiting for this new stuff too. I know you got an album dropping soon, right? Or it's dropped already oh, yeah. by the time this airs. No, it drops in, oh, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, it dropped uh, like 20 days ago or something, um, but actually it drops in two days, three yeah. days. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, I'm this. pumped about that. It's gonna be hype, um, man. That's gonna be hype. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that, man. I've, I've been listening to everything. I got you on release radar and stuff. So, nice. No That's but awesome. Yeah. Um, keep it up, man. I really like what you're doing. I've, I, I really see similarity in us in the terms of trying to build a community together. That's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Interesting um, and I'm inspired by the content that you create, um, on YouTube. I've been watching yeah. those videos. It's cool. I really like that video with your head in the fridge. Um, yeah, could you talk, yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, that was originally a project for my uh, college. I made it for my college. 
and then I decided, you know, what, let me just upload it too, because it's kind of, it's kind of like it, it's very abstract humor, and I'm doing a lot of abstract humor stuff now for some reason, because I thought I it was hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was not meant to be um, released, but it was, and I, I don't regret oh. it. Yeah, good call, good call. Um, sweet. We have uh okay, yeah, we should probably um end it. Is there uh you kind of already did like your one last thing. Um, yeah, yeah. But is there anything that you want to say at the end here to the people? I'm good right now. Um, but yeah, keep this up, man. And everyone who's right. watching, stay safe. Awesome. Um, this has been David Prorock with Kid Rohan. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. You can ask any question to Kid Rohan, and then um, I'll, I'll make probably, sure that yeah. he answers it. So this has yeah, been he'll, a famous he'll, he'll rapper. Like, he'll go to my house and make sure. <laughs> yeah, bro. All right, sweet. Okay. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll talk to you, you later. Have a great one. You too. Bye. Stop. Okay. Oh. Focus on love. Love was in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling's focus. Focus on love. Love was in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling is bogus. Focus on love. Love was in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling's focus. Focus on love. Love was in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling is bogus. I wanna lay down a never-ending road. We never